Hey up guys, what's going on and welcome back to Sterling Albion where the split has happened and there are 12 games after the split. We have to play each of them twice again, but I brought you back for the Celtic game. Celtic did beat Rangers, so if you are a Rangers fan, I do apologise, but Celtic won that match. It would be a massive oversight if I didn't bring you the first Celtic game we get to play, considering we are, of course, in the third tier at this point, so it would be remiss of me to do, not to do that. Lopez now joined top scorer with 19. Cal Nacelle now third on the average ratings. 7.29 for the league. 7.36, I want to say, for the total. Yeah, he's Cal Nacelle. It tends to miss top of the clean sheets now as well. We've had a very good post-split performances. In fact, everything since the 0-0 against Peterhead has been rather good. There's been 2 0 nil since, but other than that, win, 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 win. Yeah, I mean, we lost to Queen's Park. We drew with Peterhead in the episode last time out, and then we caused Smash St. Mirren 5-2, and something between those two has clearly wakened our team up because 9-0 happened, 3-1 away at Peterhead happened, the first game after the split was arguably the toughest one of them all, away at the team in second, 3-1, that took us top. 2 0 nils put us joint top, but three wins and Peterhead slipping up against other teams has meant we are now six points clear. Most recently, 8-0 against Cove Rangers, who I did feel sorry for until I realised they were the team that took the defensive midfielder I wanted at the start of the year. So yeah, they, they have no pity. I have no pity for them now. Also, Dean Ritchie is probably regretting his choice to go there because they are being broken to the point where they are now actually technically behind Edinburgh, but because of the split, stay ahead of them. And I wasn't fully certain if we'd played a game extra just because, of course, we have to play this game now. But no, we are on an equal amount of games. So it is six points clear, same number of games played and six to go. So whether or not Peterhead or Stenhouse Mule will be top by the time we reach Peterhead, I don't know, because they play each other now. So if obviously Stenhouse Mule win that one, they will leapfrog them. But that's not our focus right now, because our focus right now is Celtic. So we do have a marginal problem in the sense that we have played quite recently, and we've not really recovered. So there's a few people not, not as conditionally nice as I would like, most notably Central Defender. But my problem with Central Defender is, do I go with a 3.5 Central Defender on 83%, or do I go with a two-star defender who is fine but not match sharp? I think arguably I'm in the best position I could possibly be right now. So Smith, Tchaikovsky, Graham, Ngala, James, Donnellan, Nacelle, Gardner, Gohi, Bai, Baiki, Lopez up front. Who's now 24 goals. He's had two hat-tricks, I think, or at least one hat-trick. They line up the same. There is a disturbing number of La Liga players here. Perez, Correa now, I think is Valencia. Leon on the left, just straight up signed. I'm trying to work out why I recognise Leon. I think it's because I, I think it's just because I get him in like every other pack on FIFA Ultimate Team. He was at Monterey, Araujo, of course, Barcelona as well. So quite a lot of players. Edouard's playing on the right hand side. I don't know where this Bayo is from. Is he actually a, he's contracted to Celtic, but wearing a shirt from someone else. I mean, he's worth 8.5. He's not the best striker you've ever seen, but he's obviously way better than anything that we've got. Let's go cause an upset. Is probably the best way to motivate my side right now. Oh, this is the first time we have... I say this is the first time. This is the third time we've actually been second favourites. Significantly second favourites. I mean, I presume we were second favourites against our broth, was it? I've forgotten who the team we played two, 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 two rounds ago was. But we smashed there and we smashed St Mirren. So, I mean, we've got it in us. But at the same time, this is Celtic. This is a different level. The difference between League One and the Championship of Scottish football, arguably not that much. They've scored within three minutes. This is not good. You can say the difference between those two tiers, it's not much. So being our growth, fine, okay. Most of our side are players that are of that quality anyway. Being St. Mirren, a little bit of a surprise. You know, Premiership is possibly a little bit of a step up. Some of those teams have been there for quite a while. They've, they've got players who are significantly better than Championship. Celtic, of course, have players that are used to playing in Europe and therefore are another level above that. Um, Ted Smith has scored a goal and he's offside. Um, what? I'm not quite sure. I think Ted Smith has scored a known goal, but someone in the build-up to that was offside, rather than Ted Smith being offside. That was very weirdly announced to me. I mean, we've done nothing, which is not great. Do you like to maybe try something? I mean, we can try cautious. Try to obviously soak up this pressure a little bit more and then try to counter more. I have taken off counter press, which is always, which is always a dangerous thing when you're the second best side, because it just drags you out of position. So... I have made a few accommodations for the fact we are playing Celtic. Thierry Correa. I mean, Thierry Correa is the name I do recognise. I've, I've signed him, loaned him on previous FIFA's, previous football managers. 
He was always a decent young prospect, Thierry Corre. That's a great goal. Um, I'm slightly concerned what Ted Smith's done to allow that to happen, but I feel like Thierry Corre was one of those wonder kids who you'd always sign on like former games. That is a bloody great strike. Ted Smith actually had a good cracker trying to save that. Just the strike was too good. But yeah, Corre was one of those youth prospects who was always well rated and you'd probably pick up a pick up all the time, but has sort of just become good rather than great. I mean, you've literally done nothing out there, so I don't know why I should sympathise with them. I mean, I say that, I don't know how old he is. He's 22, so he's still got a little bit in him, but yeah. That reminds me of a Saskibar a little bit. One other hour, how can get his first goal of the year? Because that's what happens when you play teams. I'm a little bit annoyed. FM21, can we cut that out? Can we cut out whatever piece of code there is that makes it more likely players are going to score their first goal of the season against you rather than anyone else? Bear in mind that we've played 32 games this year in the league, plus Cub games, and then this guy waltzes in and scores his first goal of the year. He is a defensive midfielder, but still, can we, like, literally do anything? We've had no shots. I, I wasn't expecting us to win, but I was expecting us to do something. Oh, screw this, I'm going attacking. Cautious is just pointless. I mean, Graham in central defence is problematic right now. There's two choices. How good is Donnellan back there? Is Donnellan technically better than McGregor? Uh, McGeechee, sorry. Yeah, he is. <laughs> As a central defender, I think I think Donnellan is better, so I will do this. I mean, Gohee Bai is getting tired. He's booked. He's not played well. And it saves, it saves, having, saves having to bring McGeechee on in case something happens with Tom James. Can we, like, just do any... We've had shots now, at the very least. I mean, I wasn't expecting us to win, but it was slightly... I can't fault you for effort. I mean, there was no effort. There was literally no effort, so I don't know why that was given to me as an option. St. Johnson beat Motherwell. Took him a long while. Kilmarnock are sniffing around Juanito Lopez. Interesting. We did get 100k for that. Not that it matters, because we have 60 million. And Peterhead beats Stenhouse Muir, which essentially seals who we play next. So I will play through until we get to St Peterhead, and I'll let you know then. So we've just finally actually beaten Queen's Bar for the first time this year. We've failed to beat them three times out of three up till now. But it has guaranteed us the promotion, which I probably maybe should have shown you this. But at the same time, I don't really think failing promotion was going to be a problem considering where we were six points clear of second. And obviously they had points on third. So I never really felt like promotion was in doubt. I'd already been offered I'd already been offered a contract halfway through this year. The fact that I've been offered another one is quite remarkable. But I'll say yes and finalise it. But the interesting part of this is the fact that obviously it's set out the initial budgets of 51 million. I didn't even have that much when I got promoted to the Premier League, let alone Scottish Championship. I mean, obviously, bear in mind that the wage budget, I've just realised the wage budget is 775k. Our wage budget, our wage bill right now is 12,000, just to put that in perspective. It's 12,000. I know we've got 60 million, but, and we are making money because of our stadium. Our committed spending is actually only 10 grand and a bit. So we've got about, yeah, we've got about 765,000 to play with. Can I, can I put some in the scouting budget now? Nope. That's so dumb. Why can't you just constantly keep putting money into the scouting budget? FM21, make that a feature. If you've run out of scouting money, if you've got money, can you please let, let me move it over? Yeah, I mean, the gate receipts, one million for this month. That's in part the Celtic match, but come on. A year ahead of schedule, manager support, boost in a cell. I mean, already my favourite personnel. Callum, Callum, my friend, Callum. Holds you in the highest regard as a manager. He's been here seven months, or however long this is. I mean, a few bonuses paid out <laughs> to the, weirdly, only the first three I signed. I'll be honest, that was part of how I got good contracts with them, but still. Peterhead is only in two days. Now, there's three games that remain after this. Oh, well, the scouting range has been upgraded, but I still can't put money in it. I mean, it's bloody helpful, isn't it? So, yeah, the point I was trying to make there was after this, there will be three games and we're six points clear already. So if we win this, then that puts us nine points clear with a vastly superior goal difference, which essentially means we're champions. So win this and we're essentially champions. I think what I'll do, though, is I might play the Stenhouse Mule game afterwards as well in this episode, because that will confirm us in theory. And then I'll just bring you the roundup at the end of the year. Weirdly, after being promoted, I'm allowed less scouts. So because we only played a few days ago, we are quite tired. I think being part-time means we don't recover as fast as full-time. I don't know why that's a thing. But 
worth noting, by the way, we will become professional at the end of the year. It's essentially our first 11, actually. Yeah, there's a few tie players in the squad, but it's essentially our first 11 just with Rizonka on the left-hand side because Mr. Gohibai did take an injury. I can't find him now. There he is. He took an injury. But win this, we've essentially sealed promotion. I'm not sure if I actually will bring you the Stenhouse Mule game either way now because I've got to do a bit of talk on the roundup. It keeps saying the title will be ours with a win, but mathematically it isn't. I'm really confused. It keeps saying the title will be ours with a win, but it won't because there's still three games which we can mathematically lose and Peterhead can win all three of their remaining ones. It's not like they played an extra game. If head-to-head -head was a factor, was the first thing, then yeah, sure. But it isn't. It's goals scored. It's goal difference, goal scored, head-to-head -head in that order. Callum Razonka? Well, he's razonka that one, that's for certain. Bloody hell. Where's this come from? I mean, we've had him since January-ish, maybe even earlier than that. It's his first goal of the year. I mean, what a way to score it. And yeah, that puts us nine clear with three games. I don't know why it's saying we're guaranteed the champion. Yes, the goal difference is 27, which would require, which would require a nine-goal swing in each of the three games remaining. But still, mathematically, we're not champions if we win this. 2-0. 25 goals for Juanito Lopez. I've not really shouted him out all that much so far. But he has done the job I was expecting of him. I knew he could score goals at this level, and he has done that. 25, to be precise. Actually, when I brought him in at York, his first season, he wasn't that prolific. It took him a while to settle in. Here, though, he's hit the ground running. I seem to remember he only started really scoring the second half of the season with York. This time around, I'm pretty certain he scored about 15 in the first half, and it's actually the second half he took. He's been a little bit more spotty. So sort of the January, February, March period, it was a little bit quiet until the, until the you know, the 9-0 and the 8-0, where he scored a bunch in those two games. But he had, a, he had a pretty awful run, I think, January, February, particularly. Lopez, nearly... So despite Peter Head obviously being beaten here, they do look pretty much nailed on for promotion as well. There'll be seven points clear, although of course played one more game more, one game more than Stenhouse Mule. So there'll still be four points with three games to go. It will be quite a bottle if they failed that, even if Stenhouse Mule win their game in hand. Mikey, oh, bar. I mean, 75 minutes have gone, 77 minutes of this game. It's not been highlight heavy despite being 2-0. There's a few very, very tired players out there actually, so I will get them off. The entire back five are all being booked here. I'll take James off because I need James more than I need Tchaikovsky to be 100% fit for the next one. Although, let's be honest, I just need to get a point from the last three. Or for these guys to mess up in any of their remaining three games again. There is a highlight here in the last minute of regulation time. Nacelle, quite tired himself. Tchaikovsky finds Rizonka. Tchaikovsky again. Bikey on the far side. That's over. Well, that's a move I've seen time and time again. It's been put in from, the, from that left-hand side. Either go you buy or Tchaikovsky or Livingston, whoever's playing left back. 2 0, efficient, quite a few highlights. Well done, lads, good win. Yeah, I really don't know why. I don't know why he was telling us we could be champions. So, what I'll probably do is show you the goals from Stenhouse Muir, or at the very least, the point in which we do become champions. Ah, we could do it here, actually, if Peterhead don't beat Cove, which would be. Okay, they did. I'm going to say that would be a very, very anticlimactic way of doing it. Oh, they. Pl oh, they Peterhead play again before we do. Um, okay, well, if they don't beat Brecken, same situation. I'm going to say, we play on the Tuesday against Tannhaus Mule. Because there's seven teams, the schedule's a little bit weird. Right, so we're champions without playing a game. The fact that Peterhead had to play twice there is really weird, but, well, there we are then. I'll just bring you back at the end of the year then for the full roundup. Not really a lot of fanfare for this, it doesn't feel like, but I love the fact that the pivotal match apparently is the 4-4, the 4-1 against 4-4. That's, mm, I know there's a joke there, isn't it? With, with East Fife, I think it is. Surely, surely beating 3-1 Peter Head away, that was the main one, but all right. It's worth noting that our season preview odds are now actually ridiculously short as well, thanks to all the free agents. Uh, Ted, do you want a new contract? No? Okay. I mean, they'll be getting one because I think quite a few of those lads I only signed on two years. I just dread to think what they want. <laughs> and I think actually just by beating Stenhouse Mule there, we've secured Peter Head's promotion as well. Yep. Beating Stenhouse Mio got Peter Head promoted. Unsurprisingly, I can still see the championship in the bottom right. Wolves destroyed the championship. No idea how they got relegated. We were so... <laughs> we were so close to the joke there. I mean, obviously we're not Fife, but... 5-3. right -o. So there we go. We finished the year with a nice tidy win against Cove Rangers, who didn't really fare well against us all year, actually. Peter Head beaten on the final day, too. Leaves us with a nice... 14 point cushion in the end. 77,000 for winning league. Well, that's less than we got for getting to the semi final of the cup, surprisingly. But 
again, doesn't really make a difference to our profits. I think we get more than that on a match day because of our stadium. So Celtic did win the cup. They did beat St. Johnson as well. Overachievers, though, are us. So, yay. So with the last game being played, our end of season stuff can't be far away. What I can do while I'm waiting for that to actually come through is show you our best players for the year. Now, Callan Russell, of course, is there. 7.34 for the full year. <sighs> what a boy. 13 assists at the end for Callum Russell. 13. Five goals chipped in now and then. Good pass completion. Do I have chance creation on this? I don't think I actually have chance creation, which is a bit of a bit of an oversight. Oh, I do. Sorry, chance creation per 90 I have. Creates a chance every two games. It's not massively high. Actually, the fullbacks with their crossing abilities do actually produce more chances. And speaking of the fullbacks, Dejan Trykovsky, worth every penny to bring him in in the end. 850 quid a week. He is our highest earner, joint highest earner. 15 starts, 7.56. Didn't score, but got eight assists in those 15 starts. Incredible. Eight assists for Juanito Lopez as well with 27 goals. Dylan Bikey got nine assists with 15 goals. Gohi Bai was six, six assists and eight goals, 7.12. Joint highest earner with Tchaikovsky. So it's good for Gohi Bai in the end. That inside forward role, notoriously dangerous for me in the past. Notoriously rubbish players in the past. And I'm thinking, you know, Neil Bennett, the other one. I've forgotten his name now. We've had issues there before, up until Virgil Carpentier, really. Did we not have a consistent performer in that left-hand side with York? But go he by 7.12. He had some very off games. So the fact his average rating is still above a 7 is quite impressive, really. When he did play, he did play very well. Whereas the bottom end of things for consistent performers, uh, consistent players, I mean, Calamidi, disappointing. It's got to be said, I played him 14 times from the start. He averaged 6.67. Not what you want to see. Same with his other right back. You see why we wanted to get Ross James in. Ross James, Tom James in. You can see why that was the thing. Ted Smith, 49 appearances, 6.8, 22 clean sheets. You'd love to see it. But otherwise, you can't really argue with the rest of them. McGregor, 6.94 in central defence. Not too bad. Ungala, 28 appearances, 7.15 in central defence, too. Ross Graham, when he came in, 23 starts, 7.28 for that central defender. Very, very impressive. Four goals from the lad as well. Bear in mind, he was signed in January on loan. Four goals in the second half of the season from a central defender. You do. It's very, very impressive. Actually, tackle rates. The two fullbacks, actually, Ross, uh, I keep calling Ross James, Tom James and Trykowski. Three tackles per game as well. Same with Livingston. The fullbacks actually doing their defensive duties very, very impressively with high tackle rates to boot. And Bonds and Gala, imperious in the air as well. 80%. It's quite good. Eight headers, one per eight, 90 minutes. Eight headers, one per 90 minutes. That is an insane heading rate for a defender, and I can see why he is up here now. But we'll try and get this end of season stuff in. I don't know why it's not come through. You know what it is? I think it might be this playoff. I think it's the promotion relegation playoffs that are holding up the end of season. Poor bowl manager being sat for poor finances. I don't think that's his fault. I mean, it's worth noting we're still training, so our end of season isn't over. I don't know why we're training. There's no matches for us to play. Uh, so the medals have been given out, and the payout's been done. 43k, not bad. We've got players in Team of the Year, Ted Smith, Dylan Bikey, Calum Nacelle, Juanito Lopez. I wonder if there was a minimum number of games involved because you'd think the defender would be in there as well. Now, obviously, the, our team of the season isn't necessarily that incredible because we've only played one year. But I kind of want to know who the fans liked. I want to know who they thought our best signing was. Are we still waiting on the promotion? No? What are we waiting for then? Lopez actually did get highest goals in the end. And Calum Nacelle was so close to nicking second. So close. I mean, the training ends here. So I do wonder if this is the trigger point. I'm not doing any transfer stuff until this happens, which might work to my detriment, but never mind. Yeah, so essentially I had to wait till the end of the training. And the answer is Callum Nacell. The answer to all of my questions is Callum Nacell. I mean, when isn't it? But player of the season, goal of the season, signing of the season, young player of the season. If I ever needed proof who the best player in Football Manager 2020 is, I mean, yes, there's an asterisk, of course. He, he's not a Premier League player, but Mr. Consistent. Mr. Consistent. I want to screenshot this. In fact, I am. Uh, team of the season is essentially our best 11. Livingston does beat out Tchaikovsky, possibly because the game's played, but obviously not as good as him. Club vision for next year is interesting. They've got culture attacking football. I can't remember if that was there already. Work within the wage budget. I think with it being 775 grand, we might be all right. Sign players to sell for a profit. He says with 60 million on the bank and a 50 million transfer budget. Top half is their prediction. Top, top half. 
Duncan not really being that ambitious. Considering we smashed the team who were top of their division last time. Mid-table, I mean, with the end-of-season team meetings, I find it's always best to go with what the club vision asks for, and that was mid-table, so it's worked. Top tip, by the way, in case you didn't know that was a thing. In case you hate these end-of-season meetings and get them wrong every time, just go with what the vision is. I don't know why people panic on that. Two sponsorship deals, they're not worth anything. Scouting budget, ah, yes, so I do get the full scouting budget next year of 720k. Upgrading youth facilities, that's all done. Oh, that's going to happen, sorry. 27 goals on a new team record. 13 assists is a new record for assists. Most player of the matches is a new record. New clean sheet record. So everything, everything's sorted then record-wise. We broke our own points record as well. I don't think we broke the league record, but we, ro- we broke our own... Sorry, did that was that tax bill? Oh, I was just trying to work out why we had a massive debt there for a second. It's because of this, the 12 million there. I was trying to work out why, where this had happened all of a sudden, because we were in profit. It's the combination of the tax bill and this. Right, oh. Oh no, because this is counted as a new season. Right, that's what's happened. Last season, six million plus. I see now. Okay, we're good. We're fine. I just want to double check if our growth did actually end up winning division above. They were second. They still got promoted, but we did beat them on our run through in the cup. So the fact that we beat them bodes very well for next year. And not just beat them, like we crushed them. Like that's their season preview. They were five to one. So the fact that we crushed them means that we should be in this pack next year. And with the right additions, I feel like we could make a very, very good case of getting back-to-back promotions in a similar amount that we did this year. So, yeah, look, we're one to five now <laughs> at the end of this year. I did, I, I did stack our cards quite, he- quite favourably towards the end of that year. <laughs> oh, dear. But there we have it. Thank you for joining me. I'll be back on Monday for all the transfer business for the summer between these two seasons. And we'll begin season two then. So until next time, thank you for joining me. Ciao.